Uh, hey folks, um, I wanted to share something with you that I've been working on for the last couple of days. Um, and honestly, this is just to gather feedback from you. What you're about to see is still like a, you know, a unfunctional, non-functional prototype. Um, it's nowhere near ready yet, but I wanted to get your early feedback on this. Um, okay, so the thing I've been thinking about is like, how can we actually make foam referencing and linking more flexible in a sense that we can reference not only files, um, but like any content in any file um, in a way that is kind of robust and just uses markdown um, content instead of, um, instead of like having some kind of like separate database. So essentially, how do we make foam a little bit work a little bit more like Rome um, while still staying true to the kind of like the goals of portability and, and et cetera, et cetera. So this is an idea I have. So um, just a reminder, you know, like how foam works is that, you know, we have a, a, a directory of markdown files um, and we can reference to any of them. So for example, I can reference this document. I can reference this document. Um, I've made some improvements here. So you can reference files that are in any, um, any case. Uh, even files that have spaces to them, which has previously been a little bit uh, tricky. Um, so all of this, this works now. Um, but what if we wanted to reference some content inside, for example, the principles document? Um, so here I have this uh, file. This is from the foam uh, documentation. Uh, let me just bring that up here. So um, let's say that we wanted to uh, reference, for example, this heading. Now, this is, or this section, this subsection here that says enables to do your best thinking. Now, this is something that, you know, we have already been able to do in standard markdown links before. Um, you know, we just find the heading here. So uh, we say enables to do your best thinking. Um, and it will generate a slug, um, you know, based on, on the link. This is uh, pretty much how, how you, we are able, this is the extent to which we are able to link with markdown. Um, but what if we wanted to link to any content? Like, for example, what if we wanted to link to this particular um, paragraph over here? Um, so um, what I've kind of come up with here is the idea of like having, um, you know, a block identifier. Um, the syntax I, I'm playing with right now is using the caret character. So for example, if we wanted to make this, um, you know, section called intro, um, then, you know, we could give it an ID and we can reference it uh, by saying, you know, uh, foam is built upon, okay, so we found it. We can already see that the ID is, is, is shown here. Um, so we can say now ID, and now we have uh, a stable reference to this particular paragraph. Um, even if we change the content of it, principles, for example, like this, um, it will not break the link because this is, um, this is an ID. Um, but obviously, now that user experience is not great, we, we don't want to have to go to the document, find the block first, um, give it an ID. We really want to you know, be able to use the full text search here in, in, um, in the auto-completion itself, find the, document, find the content, and then um, you know, like give it an ID. So let's say I wanted to, for example, find this block uh, that says, um, you know, phone works for you, you don't work for foam. So this entire bullet point over here. Um, so I could say, I could works for you. And now we can see that it's, it's given a hash or an ID over here. Um, so as, I, as soon as I as a tab, um, what you can see here is that the ID is automatically added to, to this document. Uh, and now again, even though it is a, it is a hash, um, you know, I can, I can change the content of this, but you know, the hash remains the same. It, it's not going to change in any way. Um, not sure if hash is the best way of doing block IDs. Um, you know, we could try to do something like, for example, as you know, I'm typing, you know, principles and, you know, works, um, instead of generating a hash for it, you know, we would use the text that, um, you know, you, you've typed here and then that becomes the ID. But that to me seems a little sketchy because, you know, sometimes you might actually have to, you know, look for something should not, because you don't remember exactly where it, you know, it, it comes from, uh, for example, um, no, I lost it, should not. Uh, and, you know, I, I can even look at the full sort of markdown content over here and go like, which one is it that I actually want? Uh, oh, leak six. that's the one that I want. Now, I don't want the ID to be should not. Um, so how are, we gonna, um, how are we going to come up with this? So the, the best way that I thought right now is to leave it to the user because it, it, it's in the user's sort of like mind 
you know, they have an idea of like, what is the kind of like the semantic content of that block that they wanted to reference. Um, so I have enabled this, um, you know, sort of ability to overwrite the automatically generated block ID. Um, so let's say we wanted to reference this particular package deal block. Um, you know, we're, we're able to say principles, we'll find the package deal like so, uh, and then the hash is generated. Now, um, what I would like to, you know, do here is essentially just enable you to, uh, you know, change it to whatever you want. So um, you can see that this is actually live updating um, as, we're, as we're editing this. So if you just wanted to, for example, use very short IDs like number one, then you know, this would work. You could just give it number one, but you could just call it something like package. Um, you know, and that's kind of like the basic idea of, of what I'm thinking of doing, doing with these. Um, the, the way that I, I'm imagining that these IDs will work in terms of HTML generation or generation to other tools is that we'll we'll just have to implement some kind of uh, um, like a trans translation that like takes this and actually just hoists you know this ID to the entire block. So the outcome could probably be something like a name uh, you know package like so. Um, and the cool way of uh, cool you know using this a name for example is that this is exactly how um, HTML you know, addressing works. Um, we are able to already link to this anchor in, in standard HTML sense on the link side, we don't need to do anything weird. We can just, you know, like use the same linking format. Um, and at the same time, I think this is a, a pretty elegant solution for, um, you know, for, for uh, on, the, on the website publishing side, because we can now, you know, using, we can just also give this like a class name. Uh, we can just say that it's, uh, it's a block, for example, we can style this in a way that shows that it is actually a block that is being referenced. And then when you hover over it, for example, you could see all the things that are referenced in this block anywhere in the workspace and even like, you know, uh, navigate to those documents. Um, so this is, this is the basic idea. So the, the syntax here is, you know, this, this carrot syntax, but you know, we could, you know, iterate on that. Um, I like the carrot because it kind of like, it, you know, it's very small and, and unintrusive. Um, it's also very unlikely that you would ever end a section naturally with a word that says carrot and then a bunch of like um, text characters. And uh, beyond that, it kind of like points up, like, you know, it points to like, hey, you know, this is uh, pointing to to this, you know, above content over here, this 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 block that you have here. Uh, and because in Markdown, uh, single line white space is, um, you know, um, unimportant, uh, you know, you can also just give the ID here on the next line if you would prefer. Um, I don't know what else, um, you know, really to show you. I mean, this, this will work in arbitrary, you know, so we can say arbitrary depth, um, you know, uh, third level. Um, and we should be able to just over here, um, say principle, uh, principles, third level. And we can reference, you know, this this content block over here. And if we didn't like it, if that's not the one, we can just backspace, backspace, and then we can try again, and we can say arbitrary depth. And now we are referencing the correct block. <clears throat> so I think, you know, that that's pretty uh, sweet and elegant, and I I personally would like to use it. Um, in order to make it really really nice and user friendly, um, one thing I've done is I've I've made sure that this is very nicely keyboard navigable. So once you open a link, you can uh, tab this open. And I don't know if you see this, but there's actually two, um, two cursors here. So you're using a snippet cursor and then like a snippet end stop. So here you have two options. You can, you know, after you tap this, you can, you know, start typing. Oh, you go like, you know what? I didn't actually like it. Let me just backspace it. Um, or you can say, uh, you know, let me uh, add a, um, you know, sort of anchor link here. And then you can still tab to the end tab stop, you know, to get outside of it. So you can then, you know, start typing content. Or if you don't want, intend to add anything else, it's pretty easy as well. You can just say Wikilinks and tab tab, and then you're on the outside of it. So you can continue, continue typing. Um, and then, um, you know, furthermore, if you know that you want to reference a section, so you just go principles, you can, instead of tabbing here, you can directly hit the hash key and get the auto completion. Um, to the to the particular block. Um, what else? Um, oh, uh, and then one thing that I think we want to support is also aliasing. So um, we can also hit the pipe key, 
and we can then you know type uh, click here to see terminology uh, and this this would then become the the description of the of the link um, and yeah, obviously all of this stuff, like right now it looks a bit ugly, um, but you know, we can, we can play around with it. We can, um, you know, like format this so that like, it looks more like a, like a link. Uh, we can even like uh, record these as symbols in VS code. So these will kind of be grayed out. So you will not really even, uh, you know, see them as you're reading. Um, to me, it's very important that these are at the end of a block rather than at the beginning of the block. Um, one of the, you know, things that people have proposed is like, what if we did a hash like we just said, you know, ID and equals. But now this makes it very, very hard to actually read the content because, you know, it's um, it, it's kind of difficult to, uh, with your scan, because we typically, you know, at least in English, we leave, read uh, left to right. So it's very difficult to to scan through this and, you know, just find out what's going on. Um, anyway, I think that's it. Oh, uh, one final thing, block embeds. It's something that, you know, if you're using Roam, um, this idea of block transclusion, meaning that, you know, like right now, what we're doing here is we're linking to a uh, section like so. Uh, but if you wanted to embed that into the target document, um, you know, the idea I have here is just using the, um, using the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The, the bang syntax that is already, you know, from like images. So if you wanted to refer to a kind of like image file, for example, we could say this is an alias rubber duck. Uh, and then we would say it's rubber duck JPG. This is now just a link, but if you add a bang, then it becomes an embedded image in the, in the preview, um, you know, like so. So um, that's the, the basic idea is that like, if you do want to embed uh, a section, then you can do a bang over here. Um, and the basic concept, in, in my opinion, uh, would that when we do block embeds, um, that we, we essentially embed the, 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 the scope uh, or the, the block that is being referenced and all of its child scope. So for example, if I want to reference the starting point uh, section, um, you know, in, in that case, um, I, can, I, can, I can do that. So I would say bang, principles, starting point. Um, Oh, that didn't work. It doesn't matter. I think I just haven't implemented for the uh, dash character yet. Um, that then it would actually embed, you know, the entire child tree, you know, everything that is, you know, underneath that scope. Um, anywho, so that's <laughs> that's what I've been working for the last couple of days. It's definitely not ready. It's not working, um, you know, for arbitrary uh, content documents. Uh, but let me know what you think. Um, I'm I'm pretty pretty sort of excited about this approach. I think it's clean. I think it reads nicely. Um, and while it does add a little bit of additional clutter into your markdown, but it's very, very unintrusive. Um, and yeah, we, we, we have to add something. And I would much rather read content that has a little bit of, uh, you know, content at the end of it rather than something that, you know, like, you know, puts at the start of it because then it becomes really hard to, to scan the content. Anyway, um, that's my thoughts. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, I think the best places to give feedback on this is, um, you know, on, on Discord, uh, on, on the form Discord, I'll add a link to the, to the notes of this video. But anyway, that's it. Uh, let me know what you think. Cool.